on. What is going on, everybody? It is Coach Jan here, and I am live now on both the Justice for Hire Instagram. What's going on, everybody? And of course, on uh, on on my uh, Tai Chi YouTube channel. And uh, so, welcome everybody. What's going on, Creator? And and welcome everybody to Tai Chi to the People. So we do this every week. Uh, for Instagram, this is new. For folks who are not, um, uh, what's going on? It's good to see you. Uh, for folks who, who watch on YouTube after the fact, we do this every week on Tuesdays, Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, it's this is something we just offer to the community. It's, it, I love Tai Chi. I coach the U.S. Tai Chi push hands team uh, and, and I'm a, you know, have several world titles in the sport, the, the grappling sport of Tai Chi. So it's a huge part of my life. And uh, I love sharing it. It's one of the, the fastest things that I can add value to someone's life. So um, every week, justiceforhire.com or justiceforhire.app, if you want to join the show, JFH is a show we are producing worldwide and uh, with a global cast. So it's, we're producing it with a community. Anybody can join the cast from justiceforhire.app. And um, the concept is that we're sharing training to help you be a better hero in your own life. And that's what this Tai Chi to the people uh, every Tuesday comes from. That's really the, the spirit of it. <clears throat> um, Justice for Hire is produced by our company, Real World. It is the world's first social film studio. So we are making movies and shows as a community. And uh, it's really, really important uh, stuff that we're doing, really, really important work that we're doing because it's, it's, it's we're, we're, the, we're the first ones doing it. And to uh, be able to, to share this kind of energy with, with, um, with folks who want to be a part of, of, of storytelling in a new way, uh, it, it's, it's great. So I love sharing the Tai Chi stuff. I love sharing, uh, connecting that to heroism and to character and story development. And it's a really big part of, of uh, the joy that I personally get out of doing what we're doing. So um, if you want to be part of Justice for Hire, just go to justiceforhire.app. You can be a hero or villain or a client that hires heroes and villains in our story that's like Uber for heroes. It's about an app that's like Uber for heroes. Um, if you want to be a part of our company, every week we do these things, we, the, this, this training, and I always say that we dedicate it to the noble cause of the week. And for the last several weeks since we've launched, launched our first community round, meaning that uh, also known as equity crowdfunding, but that means that anybody can invest in the company. Um, and it's, it's very unique because normally only venture capitalists and, and, uh, and angel investors, et cetera, invest in, in companies at our stage. But with a community round, uh, it essentially allows everybody, the, the professional investors and anyone who just wants to get into the game and own a piece of the company to invest side by side. So it's a huge deal. Um, we are doing it right now. And if you want to be a part of it, you can join. So you can go to WeFunder. We're on WeFunder. It's a wonderful, it's the world's number one uh, community uh, funding platform. And um, you can go to wefunder.com slash real world, R-E-E-L-W-U-R-L-D. Uh, I've been shooting interviews for this thing all day and uh, it's a big part of what we do. So uh, I'm, hope, I'm happy and hoping that you guys are going to be um, uh, joining us on that round. But this training is always free. So you never have to feel like, like oh, I got to invest to, to train or I got to donate to train. It's not, it's not the case. So um, that being said, uh, I am going to, um, I, I, have, I have a feeling here. And if you're watching this after the fact, um, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm closing out the justice for hire um, I'm closing out the Justice for Hire uh, uh, feed and I'm going to my Jan's Tai Chi feed. And the reason I'm doing that is because um, I, the, the folks who are, are on my, my Jan's Tai Chi feed uh, probably need to, to, to know that we're live too. So I am just pressing this live button right here and feel free to forward to the training if you're watching this after the fact. All right, live. We are live. What's going on everybody on my... Jan's Tai Chi uh, Instagram. So we are live right now and we're going to do it. We're doing Tai Chi to the people. So let's get, let's get ready. Let's begin. And this is, do I have enough battery power to justify? I can. All right. Taking this off. Now anybody and everybody can enjoy it without the, uh, the ankle being a little messed up. So I have been a little bit tired since the, World Series of Tai Chi push hands two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? No, a week and three days ago. Um, so I was the head judge 
And as part of being the head judge of the first World Series of Tai Chi Push Hands, um, I wanted to make sure that people understood that the judges, someone who's judging you in Tai Chi Push Hands, if they're going to judge you, they should be able to play against you. Why? Because if you truly are part of, of, the, of what Tai Chi is as a community, uh, as a movement, as a, as a uh, discipline, um, you, it is really important to know that you should be able to, at an older age, deal with pressure, immense pressure, from somebody a fraction of your age. So it was very, or, or uh, way heavier than you, et cetera. So it was very, very important for me to, uh, you know, my father won uh, the Tai Chi World Cup at 56 years old. He got a, a he medaled at the Tai Chi World Cup in Taiwan. And I medaled as well uh, that same year, that was 2010. And I was, um, I, I, it's one of the most inspiring things for me to, to know that my father was there with me, getting his rib broken by a 17 year old and uh, still getting his medal. And what that means for me is that longevity, the, 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 the longevity that Tai Chi gives you is real. It is power. Uh, I grew up around my father and my mother's Tai Chi masters and Kung Fu masters. And I always saw the, the, the elders with, you know, with great uh, agility and strength. And, and even in their old age, when, when non-practitioners would be walking around with canes and all this other stuff. So I want that in my life. And I want that type of excellence demanded from, um, from any ecosystem I'm in. So being the head judge of the, of the World Series Tai Chi Push Hands, it's, I had to compete against whoever won. Uh, Nick Aslov, big shout out to him again. Uh, you may know him as Sifu Nick. Sifu Nick, uh, uh, and uh, he won uh, at uh, 100 and, no, what was his weight? 230 something pounds. Uh, he went and, and pretty much dominated the competition. It was really great. He played against me. He beat me 14 to eight. So big shout out to Nick. Uh, and I'm still feeling, I, I, I definitely got injured uh, in playing against him. And I was already a little injured walking into the, the, to the thing. So I it exasperated my, some of my, um, my training injuries leading up to the event. Um, so I'm feeling a much better, but I'm still recovering a bit. Uh, and, and that extra 60 pounds, I'm 174 pounds, so the extra 60 pounds he had on me, 60 or so, uh, was, was a big deal for me. Um, and I, 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 I'm grateful to be able to, to be here and to be working on, uh, always working on my improving my personal style, et cetera, uh, and, my, and my approach. So I'm really, really grateful. And with that said, today I want to train with you guys in recovery mode, meaning I want to, to do some Nekong exercises, power building exercises that uh, you've probably seen on here before. I do, I do the 12 units that are Nekong a lot. Um, and today I really wanted to focus on, on mixing Qigong, uh, which are more general exercises. The Nekong is normally more focused, more intense, uh, especially on the muscles. Um, so we're gonna combine Qigong and Nekong today to do a nice, fun workout and um, it's gonna be great. So let's just go for it. So feet shoulder length apart parallel, mouth closed, tongue to the ceiling of the mouth. Inhaling up, exhale, push the color to the palms and fingertips. When I inhale, I am inhaling into the lower dantian, which is three finger lengths below the belly button or two inches below. And it's not right here, it's actually in the center of your body. So I inhale here, use the belly to pump, but I visualize deep in the center of my body along the lines of my center line. So uh, other things that I'm incorporating, floating heart. So I'm not lifting the chest to flex my back. I'm gently opening the heart and allowing my heels, my weight to shift to my heels, dropping the shoulder blades downward. So my shoulder blades should be falling downward. This is, these are some new notes that I've been adjusting. And my shoulders are soft and they're rolling back and down. There should not be a flex up here, but a gentle downward drop. Everything down on the back, lifting up in the heart, very gentle, weight on the heels. Imagine our string with you from the top of the head. When you push through the heels, you should feel the base of the skull 
go upward, which is going to naturally tuck in your chin. That's going to help you align the body completely, align the spine and remove any curve, unnecessary curvature in the spine. Palms facing flat down. Inhale to the belly and exhale, push the color, give the sensation of breathing a color gathering the belly. When you exhale, push it down the arms with the palms and fingertips about an inch or two beyond. Inhale and feet. Exhale, wash it down the arms to the palms and fingertips. Inhale and feet. And you're visualizing with your eyes open. You have to keep the eyes open while you give the sensation of breathing a color. This is called mapping. You want to be able to map your breath on your body, in your body, and move it. And the breath, the visualization, is a vehicle for your attention. And once you have more and more control over the attention, you can start to give it different qualities of intent. So that once you have control over the attention, you can give it different qualities of intention. And, but you have to have that control. Inhale and deep. Exhale, wash down. Exhale, this is called gilded pillar. Inhaling up, breath lifts the wrist. Exhale, washing the colors of the palms and fingertips. Inhaling up, interlace the fingers, exhaling down. Soften the knees, inhaling up. Stretching out of the hips onto the toes. And I'm gonna step back just so you can see the palms are facing the ceiling. I'm lifting out of my shoulders and I'm on my toes and I exhale, drop. Down, 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 down. Breathe again, inhaling up, up lifting heaven. Exhale, push the color to the palms and fingertips. Really important, push that color and feel the circulation intensify in your hand. Inhale, draw the color back in and you're pulling it from one hand down into the belly. You do it from both hands at the same time. Pull the color in visually. Exhale, soften. You feel like you're decompressing here. Softening, softening. Oh. And inhaling up. Exhaling down. Breathing formula two, inhaling up. Inhale even deeper now. Exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. These breathing formulas are very important. There's going to be four of them. So we're doing what's called a two-stage inhalation. Stage one, stage two, you intensify the breath, inhale even more deeply, like you're opening up a water, uh, a faucet that much wider. Exhaling down, inhaling up. Exhale. Breathing formula three. Inhaling up. Exhale. Wash the color out from palms and fingertips. Inhale. Stage one. Stage two. Inhale even deeper. More intense. Stage three. Even deeper. Exhaling down. Really important concept because sometimes you're doing moves in martial arts or in life, just any particular body movement, where one breath needs to do multiple things. So I, I, I wanna give you an example here. One breath for one movement is this, punch. So I've punched and I'm exhaling, I'm pushing my breath through the hand. But what happens when I need to use uh, one breath for multiple movements? Or, and that could be maybe a combination. Exhale, exhale, exhale. Like it could be that, I'm limiting my breath through each one of those. But it also could be something where I'm, I'm inhaling as well uh, or exhaling, but you still need to use the same breath for multiple movements. So you might have to do one, this is more of a grappling moment. So I might be pulling the opponent here, one, two, I turn them, and then three, I turn them again. And so I've just done a combination with one breath, but I did three separate moves. So it's really important to have an understanding of what these, um, what these the, the the stages 
can be, again, every stage of inhalation can have its own intent associated with it. So it's really, really important to use it to control your attention and then give that breath intent per um, shift uh, of, your, of your body mechanic. So inhaling up, exhale out. One, deeper two, deeper three. Exhale. And breathing formula four, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. One, two, three. And now we're going to use the lower down chin. We're going to focus on lower down chin one, and then two, we're going to amplify the obliques. We're going to use the obliques to expand outward and bring in more breath. Three, we're going to use the lower back. You see that? So I'm dropping my lower back, obviously, but I want to use the lower back as well as a pump. I want to use the muscles to help pump into the, my, uh, my base and then, of course, fill the lungs. So, and four is going to be the entire belt. So belly, obliques, lower back, and then all of it at the same time. That's one, two, three, four. And the visualization of the color is still going to the center point right around uh, at this level. So meaning three finger lengths below the belly button, but the center point in the body. So let's go for that. One, belly. Two, obliques. Three, lower back. Four, the entire belt. One more. Belly, obliques. Lower back, tire belt. Wide the stance, hollow fist resting on the hips. Inhale deep, out, exhale, pelvis rotates on the finger. Inhale, breath pulls you to the side and up, exhaling down. Inhaling up. Exhale. Inhaling up. Inhaling out, exhale. and reverse it. Inhaling out, and exhaling down. Rest you feel like a rope that you're climbing, and then release it. Two more. Up down. Exhale out, inhale deep. Exhale out. So. I am, I'm going to pause this for a second for everyone on, on, uh, on, on YouTube. We went right back uh, because we're going to switch to TikTok so everyone gets a sense. All right, so we are live on TikTok now and let's get to the rest of this Qigong angle. <clears throat> so we were doing, we just finished Uplifting Heaven and uh, we're going to do some more stuff. We're going to do, we're going to boom, drop down. We're going to inhale up. We're going to exhale down. And we're going to feel the bones floating up and floating down. We're going to feel the bones floating up, all of it, all of it filling up at once. So I want to be really conscious that if I was doing Wu style only Tai Chi, I would be lifting just my fingertips here, maybe, or I'd be lifting just my wrists and doing my best to minimize tension in the shoulder and, the, and, the, and movement in, even in the elbows. Minimizing, <clears throat> isolating, being very conscious. If I was doing reverse breathing Tai Chi, I'd be inflating the triceps and then letting the arms slow down. Inhaling, drawing the color into the fingertips, inflating my triceps and letting the color flow down, float down. Now what I'm doing here is a combination of both, but also not really either one. We're inhaling 
still drawing the color in through the fingertips, but the intention is that all the bones in my fingers, my arms are floating up and floating down. It's as if the entire arm has little nostrils on it and everything is pulling in. It's not just the straight line from the uh, sucking in like a vacuum as we do in the Wu style into the belly. All of it's the vacuum. That little stuffy nose up. Inhaling up. You can even stand and exhale, sink and sit. If you're watching this on TikTok, this is part of what we offer to the community once a week for anybody who wants to train as a hero. You can't just uh, want to be a superhero or uh, without putting in the work. And as a matter of fact, I think that's one of the most dangerous things about these superhero narratives is that we have, um, we, we essentially, there's a, a type of superhero narrative that makes you think that you can get a stone, a power stone or suit, and that it gives you these powers and that you don't have to work for them. I think it's so important to recognize that the, the true power, the sustainable power is something that you earn. You earn it through discipline and dedication. And that discipline and dedication is going to continue to unlock more power because that discipline and dedication refines your heart, refines your mind, and it sharpens it like a blade. And so you're going to continue to remove layers that are unnecessary about yourself as you do the training, the discipline that essentially gets you to the place where you can show up as a hero every day in your life and other people's lives. So that's part of why we do this. And yes, I'm going to pull that clip for promotion. I'm saying that so I can remind myself. <laughs> Inhaling up and sinking sit. And so now we're going to start making this a little more taxing on the legs. Picking up my pants a little bit and inhaling up. Exhale, sinking and sitting. Now, one of the challenges here is that when you do this exercise, all I'm doing right now, the focus of this exercise is inhale, draw the color in through the arms into the belly and exhale, push the color down, stirring it into the belly and potentially connecting it down through the legs into the ground. Heightening your connection to the ground. The issue here is that the more we widen the legs, the more taxing it is on the muscles, the more taxing it is on the muscles, the more of a distraction that you're going to have in controlling your mind and the visualization that you're, you're supposed to be attempting right now. So I'm saying that to you, letting you know that you're going to have that challenge. And it's important to note that if you were to, to have a smaller stance, inhaling up, exhaling down, you're going to be more, uh, it's going to be easier for you to focus on that color visualization, pushing down through the legs into the body. But it doesn't necessarily train, necessarily train the muscle strength as much. So you have to strike a balance. So we're inhaling, drawing the breath as a color. Remember, we're using our imagination to image, image, image a nation. We're going to image the color into ourselves. We're going to map it onto ourselves. Drawing the color in and then exhaling, sinking, sitting, pushing down. So once you get over the, the how taxing this can be on your thighs, you're going to get into a place where you're going to uh, you feel stronger with it, um, and it might it's going to get easier for you with the visualization. The visualization is the most important thing. So inhaling up, exhaling, pushing out, sinking, sitting. Another note here is that this could be taxing on the knees as well. So it's really important to make adjustments in the body so that you're not putting too much weight forward on the balls of your feet and the big toe that are gonna push pressure into your kneecaps. And that's gonna really not feel good over time. So instead, you wanna keep your weight mostly on the center of your heels. Notice how that's adjusting my tailbone. So I'm softening my tailbone, keeping the weight of the heels. If I go forward, my body starts to, my lower back starts to flex a little bit to help maintain my posture forward. So I drop it backward while keeping the weight back. It also is gonna keep the weight more on the backside of the legs rather than on the front of the legs. And you can just do this simple, I'm standing feet shoulder width apart right now, shoulder width apart. You can just feel the difference of putting your weight forward, putting it back of where it is on your legs, more in the kneecap, 
more on the heels and the back of the leg. You want it to wash down the back of your legs. So when you're doing this, um, heels right now, I'm pushing my knees outward and I'm keeping my knees aligned with my toes. So my toes and my knees are going in the same direction. I won't push my knees in a, in a, in a direction that is not uh, somewhat aligned with my toes. So I'm pushing out here, inhaling up. And now we're going to start bringing in some martial movement here. And these martial movements, exhaling out, will be super important. I want to show you guys this posture, this palm posture right here. Eye in the middle finger, eye in the index finger, and you're going to push out and push the color through the palms and the index finger. You're not going to flex too hard uh, at all. You're going to do your best to keep the hand relaxed. And we're going to inhale and draw the color up. The same way we're doing before, like as if all the whole arm has nostrils, and then exhale, push it out. Inhale, draw it in. Exhale, push it out. And let's drop down for a second. If you want, you can inhale and really Dragon Ball Z style. I'm saying this for a particular audience to really see the color uh, from the lower down to the second chakra. Pulling, lifting up. So you want to give yourself the visualization of bringing the color up to the heart. Bring it up to the heart and then push it out through the palms. Down the arms and the palms. And sink and sit. Drop the hands down. Inhale. Visualizing it coming up. And exhaling, pushing it out. Drop it down. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale, push it down. Inhale, drawing up. Exhale, push it down. Drop it down. Inhale, drawing up. From here, reach. One hand comes to the chamber is cold. Other hand knows I was here. Boom. Reach. Inhale, grab. Exhale, drop down. Switch, punch out. Inhale, grab. Exhale, punch out. Inhale, gentle grabbing. And now as I exhale, I emphasize my forearm as if weight has a huge weight is on my forearm and it's almost like a blade. It's like a blade cutting downward. So I'm here, I do the gentle, like a vacuum cleaner, sucking in the color through my palms and fingertips while I do this grabbing motion, but I grab a very gentle hollow fist. So I inhale, draw in, and I exhale, chop the weight on the forearm, like I'm slicing down, bringing something down. You're actually pulling someone's arm down and punching back out. Inhale, grabbing, opening up my back leg. Look at how it, as I grab, all my weight's on this leg, majority, 70% of it's on this leg. I open up, exhale, shift the weight down, and out. I'm inhaling, drawing the color into the belly, and put it out. Really important to note, that these exercises I'm showing on here take time to, I, I don't even want to use the word perfect. It takes time to, to train the moves and to be have your awareness expand through the moves enough where all the things I'm saying are relevant, meaning that you're doing all of them. I'm grabbing, I'm drawing the color into the belly, I feel the weight. I throw it out the other side. The weight that's on my arm here falling, falling downward is whipping up. I'm taking that weight and intentionally whipping it up from here through my shoulder to the other arm. So I'm dropping down and, boom, and I throw it out. Really, really important. Really important to be able to visualize the weight and the pressure that you're moving around. But if you only think about weight and pressure, then you're not giving yourself the full experience and or a, a more full experience. 
meaning that this is a consistently deepening all these exercises are consistently deepening so as deep as you want to go as expanded as you as you can get your awareness that's how you'll experience it so a lot of times in martial arts you'll find people who are only concerned about the bone alignment and the musculature they're not necessarily concerned about um, the visualization side they might have uh, some awareness of the breathing meaning that uh, they might do certain things like that they might scream etc that's all well and good but to be able to focus yourself so that you can get the visualization with the breath to move through the body whether out or in when you're doing these exercises is going to deepen your experience even more especially when it comes to healing your body to talking to your own body and helping to realign things that might be out of line in your own body really really important stuff uh, i can't emphasize it enough so and when i say exhaling or inhaling right now everything i've shown here is an exhalation so now let's reverse the breathing this is called reverse breathing uh, tai Chi, but reverse breathing in general is very, very powerful and important for, especially for grappling in my experience. But uh, and striking. So I'm going to this instead of inhaling, drawing in, I'm going to inhale, I'm going to exhale here and inhale up. Exhaling, inhale. So why is this different? Because of the intention. And the breath work is catalyzing the body mechanic in precise ways, very precise ways. I'm not just inhaling or exhaling regardless, that doesn't change my body mechanic. Recognize that when you inhale, you expand your lung capacity, you expand your chest. And when you exhale, you're compressing, you're, uh, you're uh, essentially releasing space, you're becoming smaller. So when you exhale, and the hand is taking space, but the lungs are not, the lungs are collapsing. That's fine, and that's great, uh, and that has a purpose and a time and a place. But additionally, reverse breathing also has a time and a place, and it can be very powerful when intentionally utilized. So let's inhale, exhale, dropping down like you're going to sleep, inhaling up. So the, the breath expands, the chest expands, the arm reaches out. And exhale, like you're going to sleep. Inhaling up. Exhale, you're going to sleep. Inhaling up. Exhale, you're going to sleep. Inhaling up. What else can we talk about the body mechanic? These two knuckles. Whether you're inhaling or exhaling, you're going to push or pull through these two knuckles, index and middle finger. So one thing we're going to do here is we're going to inhale and allow this, these two knuckles as you're inhaling to feel like they're being pulled, meaning that you're not sticking your arm out. Your arm is being pulled up by the breath as if, as if it's being pulled to your target. A, a, a fencer buddy of mine by the name of Paul Schill, who you might know, as the weapon hunter, the weapons hunter uh, from the History Channel show, The Weapon Hunter, uh, Paul is also a fencer. And Paul uh, had said to me, give me this really amazing insight into fencing that was very similar to reverse braiding Tai Chi. And that's that the fencer is different than any other sword uh, player in that the tip of the blade of the fencer is pulled to its target. It is not thrust into it, meaning it is not pushed into the target it is pulled to the target intentionally as if a magnet's pulling uh, a, a metal. So that's a very different body mechanic. The punches being pulled is very different than the punches pushing out. And you can see that my body mechanic changes versus pushing it out, getting, letting it be pulled. When you change, when you have control of the intent of your body, uh, the body mechanics change. So it's really, really important that a chop can look like a chop if you're trying to break something, but if you're trying to pull something, it looks a little bit different. Depending on what your intention is, you can use a chop to pull someone down. You can use a chop to try to break something, but every little detail in your mind manifests in your body. They are not the same. And it's important to recognize that, the, that, that it, it becomes overt. 
meaning very easy to visually see if you know what you're looking for. But if you don't, it is very subtle and it's very hard to see. So we're talking about it right now here. Inhaling the breath pulls these two knuckles forward. Exhale, exhale even deeper. Inhale, it pulls these two knuckles forward. Exhale, exhale even deeper. Inhaling out, exhale, go to sleep. The going to sleep, when I say that, I actually mean that you're as if you're relaxing so deeply you could fall asleep into this structured stance. You relax and then when you wake up, inhale, you wake up. It is a sudden burst of energy. So you exhale, going to sleep. Inhale, even slow, it can be a sudden explosion of energy. It's just a slow motion explosion. And this is a major component of Tai Chi that a lot of people don't talk about, whether you're in the United States or out of it. A lot of people don't talk about these, these and they may not know how to. These are not, these are not uh, common realizations. And so really important, oh, inhaling. Inhale, and you can give yourself a bigger workout and a bigger stretch if you want to make your stance lower. Oh, you get really low and become more like a Shaolin monk. Boom. If you want that Shaolin monk stance, hmm. exhale, sleep. Boom. Exhale. Boom. And I'm starting to bring it back up more like a Hungar stance, if you know Kung Fu. The shorter stances based on, uh, in part, part of the story is that the stances are shorter because the uh, one part of China, the ground was more solid and another part was more like marshlands, etc. And therefore the stances had to be smaller in certain areas and longer uh, in other areas, uh, uh, just depending on the ground. So um, that is a particular uh, wonderful move I loved sharing that move. But now I want to go back into uh, some let some some more detail, more detail breath work and visualization. Inhaling deep. And now we're going to do a cover and exhalation. This cover is this is as if you're pulling down an arm and you're putting the other arm on the opponent's chin. So this is really important and especially, again, anything I show here, especially for the folks on, that are on TikTok, uh, the intention is uh, justice for hire as a series is, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's fiction. We are not a real vigilante app. It is a show about an app that's like Uber for heroes where you can hire a hero or become one and get paid. So if you're watching on TikTok and you're like, oh man, I'm gonna do this on somebody in the street. Like, that's not why I'm showing this. I'm showing this so that you can learn some application of martial arts. And if you do do action choreography, et cetera, and if you do want to do it for justice for hire, that's awesome. I think that's really, really cool. Um, and I uh, just make sure you're always safe. And that when I show things like this, um, like the palm hitting the, 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 the face, uh, it's really important to note that when you make a movie, you're not actually hitting people. It only looks like that because you, with the way you place the camera. So uh, uh, just really important note there. And so, and if you do do a shot where you have this moment here and there's some uh, seeming impact, you'll probably want to do it very slow and then speed it up on video, just speeding up the moment of impact right here and, and, and then clawing the, you know, the, the face, et cetera. You always want to keep people safe so that you can keep doing the shot over and over again. Never should you be shooting something that's going to hurt your, yourself or your friends or, or get you in trouble. And I'm saying that because there's a lot of uh, folks on, on TikTok who, who may not even be um, uh, you know, of age to be a professional in the stunt world, et cetera. And so it's just, I, I have to say that to you, always be cautious, always be careful. And I'm showing this to you more so for exercise and for your education of understanding what goes into these martial movements as well as the health and wellness benefits of these wonderful exercises. As, I, as you can see, as I'm doing this, I'm turning my waist, but the turning of the waist is massaging my, my organs, and massaging my intestines. So these are all really important things to do for yourself and for your longevity. And if you, you know, want to train and, and, and shoot stuff on your phones or, or, or in the larger production, that's all well, well and good as well. Um, and I'm always interested to see that as long as people are, are being safe and, uh, 
and always letting people around them know that they're filming just a movie and just a show and they're just shooting something fun. So always be safe. So let's talk about this. I do this exercise multiple ways and I do it sometimes as an isometric exercise, meaning I flex my muscles through it and that gives you a particular workout. And uh, then there's other times where it, it, I might want to be a little bit softer on my arms and body. Um, and especially right now, I'm really focused on the brushing of the knee. This is called a brush knee. So it's as if I'm brushing past my knee and notice how that, that's like a karate block or a taekwondo block. So it's just softer and you're really stopping or, or blocking off some, some pressure here and then you're striking at the same time. So striking here, I clear my center line, meaning right here. And with the waist, all that happens at the same time. And I stand on the, the back leg for this one. I stand on the back leg and really just gonna depend on what your situation is. If you ever have to you know, use this in a martial situation, you may be in the front leg, you may be on the back leg, you may do it from an angle. Anyhow, um, that being said, we're doing the exercise. So the exercise is a cat stance or hanging leg stance. So you sit on the back leg, toe touches here, and all my weight's on my back leg. And I shift the weight. Inhaling, exhale. Shift the weight. Inhaling, exhale. Whatever weight, whatever side I'm shifting to, my left side, then my left arm comes up as I inhale and I exhale. Inhale, shifting to my right side, my right arm comes up, exhale. Inhale, shifting to my left side, my left arm comes up. My right arm really starts to fall. One, they switch, exhale. And as I exhale, I sink, I bend my knee a little bit. As I turn my waist and my hips, hip power is different than waist power. Very important to understand. There are exercises that work only waist power. There are exercises that work only hip power. So you want to do both to isolate and then later on you combine them for more flexibility and more strength. So this is one of those exercises where you want to combine them, hip and waist. When the hip can't turn anymore, the waist is still twisting. Inhaling up, hip and waist. It's part of how you, how you get that wonderful massage in the organs. You might want to step a little. Inhaling up, exhale, sink and sit. Step, inhaling up, exhale, sink and sit. Step, inhaling up, exhale, sink and sit. Step, inhaling up, exhale, sink and sit. Inhaling up. Okay, now, now I want to show you guys the isometric version. And now I'm, I want to caution you with this as well, because the isometric version of this exercise, really, really important to understand that it's going to put tension in your body. You don't want that over time. Like <clears throat> what you want is you want to be able to put tension in your body and then consciously release the tension. And therefore it's no longer you know, it's, it's, you feel relaxed and free. But a lot of times people put tension in their bodies and they have difficulty getting that tension out. So I'm letting you know this because going into these types of exercises, if you put the tension in, you can be putting yourself in a situation where it becomes very, very challenging to relinquish that tension um, at, over time. So, and, and, the, and the, the one of the addicting things about this exercise is that you gain a lot of strength or seemingly gain a, lot, gain a lot of strength very quickly. So a lot of times in my experience, when I've talked to um, wonderful karate masters um, or, or folks who were in, let's say black ops, military, you know, things like that, who, who oftentimes in my experience have come from the karate backgrounds, very strong, very, very powerful people, um, but their bodies become brittle over time because they're used to doing these exercises, 
but not replenishing the muscles with the softer work. And the softer work is so important. So when I do this exercise and I do it soft, I can feel the circulation in my muscles increasing, the circulation of my skin, all of this stuff. It's really, really important. It's really healthy. It's really fantastic. So we are going to do the isometric exercise, but then we're going to do the soft one again because you want to relinquish the, the tension that's been built. So we're going to put the tension in there, and it's a skill to be able to release tension at will. It's a skill set and, and something that most people of all many ages don't know how to do. So we're going to work on that right now for the last exercises. So we're going to inhale up, and when we exhale, we're going to flex both hands and the abs, everything, even the leg a bit. We're going to tense it all up as we move. So we're softly lifting up everything super soft, and then exhale. <sighs> Look at my hands. I'm grabbing, pulling aside. I have this, this tiger claw here as well. So <sighs> and then I soften, release everything. Inhaling up, I already feel it in my abs, everything. Everything is attempting to, still holding on to some of that tension, but I'm trying to soften it out. And then I <sighs> soften, shift the weight to the other side. Inhaling up, I'm going to my right side, so my right arm comes up, and then <sighs> Inhale, softly lift up, shift the weight to the other side. Exhale. <sighs> Inhaling up. Other side. Soften. Even your fingers are flexing. Other side. Two more each side. Inhaling up. Exhale. One more. One more. And softly come up and out. Exhale, relax the hands, do it soft again. Inhaling up. Exhale, try to release that tension. And part of releasing that tension is inhaling, seeing the color of your breath gather in your belly. And exhale, push it to the palm of the fingertip. Inhaling up, see the color gather, shifting the weight. Exhale, feel the circulation, feel great about it. Inhaling up. Exhale. Inhaling up. Exhale. And one more time each side. And come back in. Exhaling down. Uplifting heaven. We're finishing up now. Big breath. Even deeper, even deeper. Exhale down. Again, inhaling up. Even deeper, even deeper, even deeper. Exhale down. One more. Big breath, draw the color of the belly. Inhaling up, exhale. Now, we're going to put our feet two fists apart. Two fists in front of me. My feet are about that distance apart. We're going to turn to the side so you can see. Inhaling up, breath lifts the wrists. And the fingers reach to the back wall. Chest reaches to the ceiling. Hips reach forward. Weight on the toes. Exhale, butt back, fingers forward. Keep the knees straight. Go down as far as you can with the knees straight. And then inhale in deep, exhale, bend the knees softly. Fall a little farther to the ground. And then inhale, breath lifts the wrists. Fingers reach back, chest up, hips forward, weight on the toes. Exhale, butt back, fingers fall. Soften the knee. Inhaling up. Fingers at back, chest up, hips forward, weight on the toes. Exhale, butt back, fingers fall. Inhaling up. Exhale, push the color in. Inhale deep, draw the color to your belly, put one foot forward. Exhale, wash the color like white light down the leg. 
Inhale, you have switch legs, like you're rolling a ball of white light in your belly. Exhale, wash it down. Inhaling up, rolling in the belly. This time, step 45 degrees out. Exhale, wash down. Switch legs. Exhale, wash down. 90 degrees. Exhale, wash down. And other side. Exhale, wash down. Inhaling up. White line to the belly. Exhale down. Inhaling up, turn to the right side. Exhale down. Inhaling up, turn to the left side. Exhale down. Inhaling up, over the back. Down. Back to the left. Legs. Up the inside. Down. Other side, up the inside. Down. Over the shoulders. Down the back. Inhaling up, just the fingertips now. Wu style, just the fingers. Inhaling up. Drop the hands together, a massage around the chest, specifically around the pecs, around the perimeter of what's called pectoral major. The large chest muscles, the perimeter, and then massage into the chest muscles, getting all the pressure points, all the lymph nodes, massaging, 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 and then from your floating rib up. Again, other side. You want the pressure to reverberate through the chest, not too hard at first. You always want to build up strength. Okay. This side. And four fingers on the sternum. Up and down. Hollow fist. Collarbone. Your finger, this U shape, should be on either side of your collarbone. Dental banging. This hook shape and the thumb underneath. This is for the hormones in the body. Squeeze. On switch sides, hook shape under the lip, thumb under here again for your hormones. Really important massage. When you finish working out, you should always be stretching and massaging. If you don't stretch and massage, in my opinion, you have not finished your workout. So, index and middle finger up, over, down, under with the ears. Very strong pressure. This is for the immune system. Really super strong, important. Very, very important. And we're going to take the, the, these fingers and we're going to massage the scalp. Massaging, massaging, massaging. Four fingers at the top of the forehead. One, two, three, four, and reverse it. One, two, three, four. Temples. One, two, three, four, and reverse it. Three, four. Under the eyes. One, two, three, four, and reverse it. This is for your heart. This connects to the heart meridian in traditional Chinese medicine. So you're going to press the middle finger here and you're going to massage like that. You're going to switch fingers and then one, two, three, four, five. Above and below the lip on the gums, massage. One, two, three, four, five. Switch. Four, five. The side, the gums, the top, pushing the pressure into the fingers into the gums and massage. One, two, three, four, five. Below, push the fingers into the gums and massage. One, two, three, four, five. Then take your tongue and make circles with the mouth closed. Mm, mm. Mm, mm, and reverse it. Mm, 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 mm. Flick your fingers out. So I'm putting, holding all my fingers behind my thumb. One, two, three, four. I'm, I'm emphasizing the, the nail, the nail. One, flick the nail. Two, flick the nail. Three, flick the nail. I'm flicking, as you can see, the top of my nail, four. And then I do the same for my thumb. Hiding my thumb behind a finger, hiding it behind, and I'm massaging, feeling that pressure. Feels very, very nice. And then one, two, three, four, shooting my fingers out, and then grab one, two, three, four, and soften the hands. Close the eyes, inhale, white light into your belly, and spread it through the whole body. We're going to use the sound that we're going to make 
to give our uh, give the sound uh, the visualization connecting it into the bone. So we want the sound we make to penetrate our bones. Really, really important at the very least for an exercise for your imagination to follow uh, a physical vibration into the deepest parts of your body. So we're going to make a sound and we're going to uh, make this visualization of like white light penetrate our bone marrow. So you want to see the bone marrow inside the bones being washed with this light as we make the sound. So close your eyes, inhale white light into your belly, and then wash the light through the body, through the bone marrow of every bone. Uh, you're going to inhale and bring the white light from the toes to the top of the head. And then you're going to wash it down the back, down through the bones and the bone marrow as you go. Uh, Inhaling up the side, the left side, like a tidal wave coming up and down the right side as we exhale, make it sound like a waterfall going down through the bone marrow. Uh, inhale, white line to the belly. And we're going to push it down the legs into the ground and let it come back up and around. Letting the vibration go through the space that we're in, whether it's a room or outside, you want to feel the sound penetrate the space. So you're connecting the visualization from your body into the floor of your area and up and through the ether. So you're essentially visualizing throughout the space, but through that path. Inhale white light and let the white light come up and around, like making a bubble, like a fountain in reverse around it. Uh, one more breath into the belly. When we say, ah, we're gonna push it to the top of the head, it's gonna go out like a fountain in all directions. We're going to connect our sensitivity to the vibrations in the space to make it feel like you're, you're beyond your body. You should feel like you have more awareness outside because you're listening for the vibration that you're creating around you, listening for it, filling the space the same way we were making it fill our bones. Inhale to the belly and through the top of the head, exhale. Uh, and just feel the light in your body, feel it in the space around you. Have gratitude for your body, for all the good people in your life, the space that you're in. And thank you guys for training. We do this every week, every single week on uh, Justice for Hire. So this is the first time I've done this on TikTok. So all you TikTokers, thank you guys for being here. Really grateful. I'm Jan, the creator of Justice for Hire. Every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Pacific time, we do this, this free training. Uh, it's part of Justice for Hire's hero training. And of course, Justice for Hire is a show that we're producing with a community where anyone can join the cast and be a hero, a villain, or a client that hires heroes and villains. And you can do that right from justiceforhire.app. I am live editing that show every day on Twitch, five days a week. And uh, we are producing it as a community. It's never been done before. It's a huge deal. And I'm grateful to have all you guys on TikTok here. Um, if every week we donate, uh, dedicate our training to a cause of the week. And because we've launched our first community round or equity crowdfunding campaign where people can own a piece of the company that's producing Justice Fire, which is called Real World, uh, this shirt that I have on right now, uh, anybody that wants to check it out can go to realworld.com or wefunder.com, which is the platform they're on uh, with, for the crowdfunding, uh, wefunder.com slash R-E-E-L-W-U-R-L-D. And you can check us out, see how we're going to make more movies and shows with communities. Uh, right now, Justice for Hire is our first and only show, but we're going to do this for, for, for tons of genres, um, sci-fi, action, uh, um, fantasy, and more. And uh, anybody can own a part of the company. Crowd ownership is part of what we're doing. Anybody who joins Justice for Hire, they own their character, they own their story. And it's, a, it's, a, it's like I said, it's, it's just, it's unheard of in Hollywood. So um, super excited to have you guys. WeFunder.com slash real world, uh, consider investing. And um, I love you guys. I'm Jan, once again, uh, every Tuesday we're here. I'll start streaming this on TikTok now too, because I, I was only doing it on YouTube and and uh, on two different YouTube channels, which we are live on right now. So I love you guys. I hope you have a great day. Anytime you have any questions, always feel free to reach out. Um, this video will be live on the Justice for Hire YouTube channel, and uh, it'll be up after being live 
on Justice Fire YouTube channel and it will also be on my Jan's Tai Chi YouTube channel. Again, I coach the US team for Tai Chi, so this is a big part of my life. And uh, I love you guys and I hope you have an amazing, amazing day. And uh, I will see you soon. Oh, thank you for, for the keep it up. <laughs> All right.